Well, all right, all right, all right. Welcome, everybody. Another episode of Legend Sports and Amplifying. We are talking baseball history, Negro League history, card art, music, whatever your passion is for baseball, baseball history, Negro League history. And today I'm really, really happy this morning to have on uh, artist, uh, visionary, son of a former Negro League legend himself, uh, Daryl Matthews. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you, sir? I am, I am doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I know you've got a busy schedule and uh, you are taking some time before you uh, actually hit the hay this morning, right? <laughs> so I'm glad, I'm glad you're... Yeah, I'm the, I'm the night stalker. You're the night stalker, right? So yes. uh, like I said, I appreciate you taking the time. I, I, oh, no I, I, you know, we talked quite a bit before we got on here and, and why I've been doing these... Um, what stories that I'm, I'm trying to tell, trying to highlight all of the artists, researchers, musicians, actors, so many people that, that I've come across in the last six, eight months of doing these that have got that um, connection to not just um, Negro League history, but baseball history, the country's history. And, and your story, I think, is fantastic. And so we're going we're gonna to talk through, through uh, you know, that and your dad and and what you've been working on, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, so you are uh, in Newark, New Jersey now. But you know, I told you that one of the things I like hearing is what's the origin story? How how you got to where you are today, and you're sitting in front of some of your work. We're gonna we'll look at some more of it in a little bit. But um, how did you? What did, what is your? How did you reach this stage with this passion that you have for art and and baseball and and other topics as well? Well, my origin honestly start started when I was five. Um, mostly it was comic books. Um, it was um, <laughs> it's before I even I couldn't read a comic book, but um, it was the images, you know, especially Marvel. Um, I mean, I used to read Batman, Superman, but Marvel had um, their anatomy was 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 more extreme. Uh -huh. So by looking at that type of work, that type of art, excuse me, um, fascinated me. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's funny that even though I was five and didn't read, I kind of knew what the story was all about. You know, just by the their actions and stuff. So. Um, yeah, that was my origin, and I think after that I was um, hooked. You know, it's know. it's funny you said that about comic books because there's a lot of people who uh, freak out about comic books and don't mm -hmm. like their kids reading them. I tell you what, as long as my kids are reading, I don't care what they're reading. I mean, <laughs> I think that it's uh, I think it's something I think a lot of people can relate to because I know baseball cards and uh, uh, comic books were part of kind of how I uh, I found. Uh, myself into a lot of things that I'm doing today as well so well it taught me how to read yeah it honestly I've learned how to read well through comic books especially Marvel and it's they have those high words like the, uh, the galaxy uh, yeah the guardians of the galaxy and yeah yeah gamma rays and all that other <laughs> wild stuff so I so, learned how to read pretty well so, uh, you know, and that's another thing too. My wife, I told you I was, is a teacher and I've, mm -hmm. uh, I have this thing for, uh, education and, and the storytelling is important for younger generations. And mm -hmm. so that's why I think what you're doing, um, you know, ties into all this because you've got a story that goes back. You started, you know, when you were five, you got an interest in, in, uh, in art and then that type of thing. But mm -hmm. your your dad, Fran Matthews, uh, has got quite a story as well. Uh, what can you tell us about his career? I, I know he began in the 1930s with the Newark Eagles uh, and, and then had quite a storied life after that. So what can you tell us a little bit about your dad? Well, my dad was born 1916. Um, Oh, God, I think it was in Georgia, I believe, but he was born in Barbados. 
uh, my grandmother and my grandfather was on vacation at that time, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and um, my grandmother had birth in Barbados. So, but they went back to the United States. So, because uh, my grandfather is from Barbados and my, and my grandmother is from Georgia, but I never met him because when I was born in uh, 1962, um, I don't think, um, I don't believe as I got older, I don't, I, I believe they passed away. So I never got a chance to meet them. Mm -hmm. But, um, when it comes down to my father, yeah, my father was, <laughs> um, I'm kind of like him in, in ways, but, um, he really went, I mean, he was just a very educated man, um, very well, yeah. well liked, um. I mean, everything kind of like started for him. He, you know, he finished college back in the early thirties. I'm not aged, but I'm talking about the year back mm -hmm. in the early thirties. Mm -hmm. And, um, then this is stuff my father told me. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think probably around, um, thir I mean, he was always into sports. Mm -hmm. He was, uh, he played football back in, I believe back in the twenties and thirties like, you know, played football, was very good. I have a, a news clipping of him, you know, uh, took, it took, in that photograph, it took three men to try to hold him down, but he made it to the touchdown, my father. So <laughs> I thought that was very interesting. Mm -hmm. So um, then I, I, as the stuff my father told me was, um, he got into um, baseball. Mm -hmm. This is, we're talking we're talking mid nineteen thirties here, like nineteen thirty five ish, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And then um I don't know exactly the total detail of that. You know, I only I'm only going by what my father told me. And then um he started playing professional ball. To me those guys was, was professional mm -hmm. for the Newark Eagles mm -hmm. back in um in thirty seven. And uh, he was playing ball since Wow, 37 to 48. He was the Boston Royals and other uh, teams. Left-handed hitter, right? First baseman? Yeah. And yeah. so so when he was on the Newark Eagles, that would have been uh, right around the time when they had the like the million dollar infield they call them with uh, <laughs> Mule Suttles and Willie Wells and, and yeah. the greats of the game. Effa Manley, you were telling me a little bit of a story about Effa Manley before uh, we got on here as well. Well, um, I've gotten the copies of uh, from Larry. Um, Larry, oh, I'm sorry. Larry Lester. Yes. Sorry, Larry. <laughs> Larry Lester, um, very good man, a very good man, a very kind man. Um, Larry mailed me um, like a package about this thick of documents, copies of my father's contracts, um, a letter to to you know to the Newark Eagle manager about pay, and it's just all bunch of stuff. Cool. Of news clippings. Um, I just thought those things was interesting, you know. Yeah, it makes it all real, right? I mean, yeah, that's that's yeah. the thing about uh, you know uh, some of this, right? I mean, um, and I don't want to say it, it, it's certainly not all like that, but th these stories are important because mm -hmm. no one's mythologizing these guys. They were, like you mentioned just a minute ago, these were professional baseball players. This is how they made a living. They were they were major league caliber. The only reason they didn't get to play in major league baseball was simply the color of their skin. Bottom line, that's just yeah. the way it was, right? So, yeah. so, so you know that um, fact though doesn't take away from you know you hear all these stories about Josh Gibson hit 900 home runs and and uh, Cool Papa Bell was so fast he could you know get in bed before the lights went out kind of thing. Um, those stories, yeah, a little bit of embellishment, but you know what? For the most part, these these guys were uh, these guys were ball players, and so when you got some of that stuff, I bet, right? It makes it real. It makes it part yeah. of. Uh, it uh, makes it tangible because it it, it 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 gave me a better idea, a better um, vision. What I you know by looking at that, what my father did. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I didn't know a lot of things about my father, you know, and by looking at that, it was like opening, mm -hmm. you know, treasure. Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine uh, a lot of that had to do, he, he's now, so after, after World War II, he he um, was in the military, but then he he rejoins right, and and he ends he up went, a long well, career in the military after that, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean he was um, in Korean War and Vietnam, and um, he had uh, two Purple Hearts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he has he's got an incredible story. I mean, I, and I, he I, was missing in action, and he was they thought that he was dead. Really? Yes, I, I oh God, I remember that. What I mean, what, talking about the 60s. what was going on? What happened there? Do you know? Well, I don't know the whole story, but I know my mom was act was acting very funny. <laughs> um, and then to find out, yeah, I mean, she was upset, and um, I found out much later during the years that um, they reported they couldn't find my father. And for some reason, I, and I don't know how they found him. I don't know what happened, but um, you know what happens in the military when if a cab drives up and yes. the cab driver walks up to the door something's wrong mm -hmm. but that didn't happen my father came out of the cab awesome. and got his bags and walked up to the door so after you what, thought after he was missing in action he ended up walking to the door i'm only going by cool what yeah the, the actions of my mom because mm -hmm. i was a little kid yeah i was just a kid you know i'm still yeah. absorbing my surroundings you know, you know, there's a great there's a great point that you just made there, because um, I know what it's like. As I got older, um, is when I started. I wish I wish I could go back and talk to my parents about certain subjects that I never did uh, growing up. Uh, right. My my grandparents the same thing. I mean, I mentioned to you. You know, my dad was in World War II. Um, mm -hmm. 43 to 45 and uh you know he went through some stuff i never yeah. really talked he never really talked about it he never mm -hmm. really he never really did um i wish i had talked to him more about it um uh, you know lots of subjects i wish and so as a kid i, I get it i mean you, you 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 you're not really paying much attention you're doing kid things <laughs> of course oh yeah i mean i was waiting for saturday morning so i mean Get my Captain Crunch. <laughs> That's right. Watch some Scooby Doo. You know, but but it, yeah, you know, uh, you know, or Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah, you know, I got gotcha. you. Racers. <laughs> but I'm saying my age. Yeah, no, I I was I must be the same age as you because that's what I grew up. Johnny Quest, Johnny, Johnny Quest. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Was another one of those. Gigantic. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about baseball. No, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what yeah. though? You know, looking at what's on on the wall behind you, you got. I mean, you've done artwork. Yeah. You you you're not just baseball art. You have done. We're gonna we're gonna look at those in a, in a in a few minutes. I want to go to that website. Uh, and and uh, give them a shout out and and show some of the other work you've done but uh yeah it all it all influences you though right i mean you know you probably don't think about it when you're a kid but all these things that you're absorbing um kind of is who you are eventually as you get yeah. a little bit older right yeah i mean you, i mean somehow things start coming like a puzzle yeah you know as you get older and you, you you're more aware of um things of the past and you know why they did the things they did and um, and I discovered a lot of things about my father yeah I bet you know? and, um, and and to tell you the truth I could look in the mirror and, you know I see him I see my mom too of course mm -hmm. but naturally but um, I see it in my personality mm -hmm. so it kind of reflects you know, it's kind of like, okay, dad was like that. I, I, yeah, I can tell it was like that. Yeah. You know? uh, and a lot of that stuff, it's kind of like through osmosis, right? You don't even realize sometimes. Oh, yeah. And then you wake up when you're 35 and you go, wow, I'm just, it, well, there's all those commercials on TV now about, uh, am I like my parents kind of thing. And yeah, yeah. You, know, you turn, you turn out, you turn out kind of being, um, you know, more like that than you thought. So, so did you ever hear any stories? Yeah, absolutely. Did you ever hear any stories? Because, okay, so he was on the Newark Eagles from 37, 38 to uh, 19, what, 45, 46 or so? 48. So 
this is the time. Oh, I'm sorry, he was going in between um, working in the military and playing baseball. So this was the time when, uh, you know, obviously Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier in 1947. Mm-hmm. And then shortly after that, you've had uh, a number of other players who were also on the Newark Eagles, like Don Newcomb, um, who ended up um, going on to play in the major leagues. Did did you hear any stories uh, about what was in your dad's head around that time? How, how old would your dad have been around that time? So he would have been probably in his 30s by that time, if he was born in oh, 19... What, what year? What year is that? 1947, when Jackie breaks the color barrier. So you said he was born in what year, 1916? 1916. When I was born in 60... So he's already 31, 32 years old oh, by the time... Yeah. So did you yeah. hear Did you hear any, what, any about his thoughts about any of that over the years? No, not really. Only thing that I've heard is that um, mostly his um, barnstorming travels ah. and stuff like that. He would tell me little stories, little, you know, um, he would tell me that, you know, how they would, you know, they would come to the bus, you know, like they'll go to a certain town and, and they will be, have, think, rocks thrown at the bus and all that stuff um, yeah and um he would tell me stories about uh satchel page <laughs> and stuff like that um, him and satchel page was friends but i mean <laughs> they almost had a scuffle but you know something that's just you know i mean that's how that happens yeah yeah you know. Passions get or passions any, or get any sport, or any sport absolutely stuff like that. But my dad really respects that. Mm-hmm. You know, she, you know he. My father believed that he was a, one of the greatest greatest players, but mm-hmm. my father believed there was other players that was just as good as him in in certain mm-hmm. parts of the game. You know, my sure. father was a first baseman. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. It, that point that you just said, um, it's even true today, I think. Um, mm-hmm. Satchel Page was a great player, no doubt. Mm-hmm. But he also was pretty good at, at you know, PR. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so so there, that's kind of true, I think, uh, you know, today. You know, you've got a picture of Buck Leonard behind you. You recently were just at the Buck Leonard... Um, gala right just a mm-hmm. few weeks ago mm-hmm. there's there's a player there who was probably um very the opposite of a satchel page i think um very quiet uh unassuming yeah. not a self-promoter there were many guys who just that's the way they were and mm-hmm. so yeah you know i get it i mean satchel page was a great player don't get me wrong but, you know deservedly so one of the greatest pitchers of all time um, but yeah, he was good at promoting himself. And then, you know, how, here he is in the news again, right? I mean, he would love it. I mean, as a matter of fact, Bob Kendrick, Bob Kendrick made, mentioned that the other day about the fact that, uh, you know, between Joe Biden talking to the Pope about him and so forth, he, he would love, he would love the fact that he's being talked about in 2021. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Imagine yeah. that. <laughs> but Satchel, I mean, let's put it this way. Satchel... I think what led to maybe the argument was that Satchel would be late coming in, <laughs> but he always, the team always won, always won the game yeah. because of him. Yeah. I mean, because he knew it. He's like, he, he was, he was full of himself and, and he believed in himself. And, I, people, I people, for that. Um, and people were coming to spend money to see Satchel Page. see too. him. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so, so yeah. it happens. It happens. Yeah. And, I'm, and, and I, you know, I, you know, I'd be listening to my dad. I said, Dad, why, you know, uh, Satchel Page was a good, definitely a good player. He said, yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He sure was. <laughs> he sure made the team win. And that's my, that's my, I'm talking about my dad. That's how he talks. Yeah. Yeah. Really. He said, he made the team win. <laughs> you know, after yep. that, there was no complaining. That's right. And, you know, that's the thing about barnstorming. You mentioned about barnstorming. Um, You know, the Negro Leagues are are known for that, but everybody did it. I mean, this was how guys made money in the offseason, in between travel. Now, the major leagues, because of the scheduling, white Mm -hmm. players 
were playing mostly once the season was over doing their barnstorming. The Negro Leagues were, I mean, think about how crazy that is, right? I mean, they were playing regular season games on the weekend, sometimes mm-hmm. barnstorming games on the weekend in between those regular season yep. league games. But then they were traveling and barnstorming in between as they headed to their next stop. Mm-hmm. So it's just an incredible thing that <clears throat> when people say about, well, you know, Come on, they were playing against uh, you know lesser talent. So <laughs> this, this was this was they still played their league games, and yeah. no, you know the statistics that have been added into the Major League Baseball. Well, not yet there yet, but in Baseball Reference, for example, um, they're not adding in all the barnstorming statistics. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. you know league games. So um, that was part of what they had to do to make a living, and and that's yeah. that's that's fine. <laughs> so you. Boy, I wonder if your dad, I wish I could go back and find that list. I told you in 1992 how I really, you know, I, I, I get out of college. Um, one of my first jobs I was working for, the Scranton Wilkesbury Red Barons, and they did, wow. a benef- they did a benefit night for the Negro Leagues in 1992 that Reggie mm-hmm. Jackson helped sponsor. And there were 18, 20 guys that were there. And I remember many of them. Uh, Lester Lockett, Jimmy Crutchfield, Josh Gibson Jr. was there, Buck O'Neill was there, um, Double Duty Radcliffe, uh, several others. Um, But I wonder if your dad was there. Boy, oh boy, I would love to go back and try to get that list to see. Because he, he, why I'm asking that is because he... Where was it? I'm sorry, where was this? This was in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Um, Trying to think, go ahead. But the reason why I'm asking is because... um, he he did in through the 90s he mm-hmm. he did a lot to he talked a lot about the negro leagues he he did uh, what he could to to try to promote and and tell the stories right mm-hmm. well my dad i have um vhs tapes uh my father been to a lot of uh, games um with um, Buck Leonard and a lot of those other players and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and they was, rep, you know, uh, honoring them. And my father, I forgot which one, I think this one was um, in Boston. I, I, I'm not so sure. Um, my father threw the first ball, even though he was in a wheelchair. Oh, wow. Yeah, at a Red Sox game. Yeah. Oh, you, you know that? You remember that? Yeah, I, I remember hearing about it, yes. I didn't realize he was in a. I didn't realize he was in. He was in a wheelchair when he did that. He was in a wheelchair. My father. Yeah, he was in a wheelchair. Wow. Uh, he threw the. Well, he was throwing the uh, through the first pitch to um, another, but older than my father. Um, Negro League player, ex Negro League player. Um, I don't know his name, but he was a lot older than my father, and he kind of like you know, slowly moved his wheelchair closer to him wow. and kind of threw the ball. So that kind of started the game. Cool. August, I'm looking at, I just looked it up. Uh, August 9th, 1992 was the date of that game. Um, oh, you have that? I'm looking at it on, I, I had to look it up because I'm trying to see if they listed who was there from the Negro Leagues. It's Now they're listing who was there as far as um, former Major League players. Reggie Jackson was there. Uh, Al Downing, Joe Pepitone, wow, Chris Chambliss, Bucky Dent, Mickey Rivers, uh, Danny oh. Doyle, Oscar Gamble, wow, yeah, this is some uh, uh, some interesting array of players, but they don't list they don't list the Negro League players that were there, unfortunately. Yeah, they, they did. I mean, if that's what you, if that's exactly the one that I saw, because I have the videotape of that event. Um, Interesting. Well, no, this yeah. was in Scranton. Uh, I, I know. I'm pretty sure your uh, your dad did throw out some first pitches at Red Sox games and some other things. I remember uh, reading about. Interesting. Really? But he he had. I mean, so he he did. You know, try to do what um, he could. I know to keep telling these stories because it's important. I mean, I, I mentioned to you before. I mean with um, with these types of stories it's not just now because the timing of the hunt you know a lot a lot of things per- perfect storm like we talked about um, you know you you had unfortunately the George Floyd incident of last summer coinciding with 
um, you know, the 100th anniversary of the Negro Leagues and then baseball, Major League Baseball, you know, making the announcement and, and you know, it's just been in the news and talking yeah. about it. And now we got the Pope and Joe Biden talking about Satchel Page. So, you know, which is way cool. But um, speaking about Satchel Page, go ahead, go ahead. Continue but, what you were but, to say. My point on that, though, is is that not just now, these these right. stories need to keep being told. Even, right, yeah. even because sooner or later, you know, the shine's going to come off and, and, and it's going to start to, you know, fade a little bit. But I'm hoping to keep keep these stories you know keep that hope they keep going i'm going to say this that i that's why i'm doing what i'm doing cool okay it's because i believe that that you know yes yeah, satchel page will always be in the books you know of mm -hmm. history uh buck leonard will always be in the books of history you know people know these guys but there's players like my father and other players that are not exactly. They, they know me. I'm a, well, let's put it this way. I was shocked to see my father's photo or picture in the Kansas City Museum, Negro League Museum. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised to see that. Cool. So, very happy to see that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in one of my father's interview interviews, um, he said that there's a lot of great it was a lot of great baseball players absolutely that yes. played but just they didn't get recognized mm -hmm. you know you know he's you know and that's exactly what he said he said you know like josh gibson and 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 uh cool papa bell and and satchel page yeah they're good players but he said that there was other players was just as good or even better i'm sure yeah and um, it's just that they didn't get a name that's I mean, right they got a name, but you know what i mean is is that they didn't get the recognition that they truly deserve. Mm -hmm. You know, that, I don't know if, you know if you're familiar with the story of John Donaldson, uh, but he was a pitcher um, who pitched as far back as the early, early 19 teens, 19, and we're talking 1911, 1915, now in, through the 1920s into the 1930s. He, mm -hmm. he then went on to become a scout, um, you know, four Major League Baseball teams. And he barnstormed all over the country. He was one of, if not the guy who the Kansas City Monarchs are probably, you know, one of the most recognizable Negro League franchises ever, along with the Homestead Grays and Pittsburgh Crawfords maybe, but, but the, the Monarchs, everybody knows the Monarchs. Uh, mm -hmm. John Donaldson had a hand in naming them the Monarchs, but really? you know what? No one knows who John Donaldson is, <laughs> but the guy yeah. is a, the guy should be in the Hall of Fame, as mm -hmm. should many of these other players that you're talking about. Yes. But because of you know the times we're talking about here, you know, you know, I, I, like I mentioned, they just weren't playing there not because they weren't good enough. It's because the color of their skin, and so by that same token, the promotion was not there for these guys. I mean, the same way that the same way that, you know, they're not getting the opportunity to play, their stories are not being told. I mean, you, you see what happens today with a player. I mean, once right. once someone is into that circle, they, 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 the, the notoriety and, and everything that goes with that follows them. Right. These guys yeah. didn't these guys didn't have that. And so, yeah, you, you, we're trying to, you know, and, and many of these many of these authors and historians have been doing this for decades telling these stories because it's that's they were never told they weren't told before they need right. they need to be told now so well i just think that it's 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 just um and they probably never be told but some yeah that's Most. right that's right and and yeah. that's you know, I, I think i mentioned to you as well I, on twitter every day i try to put out something not just about a player but mm -hmm. the town he was born in uh, a little bit about where he might have played, who he might have played for. So the people get the idea that this was all around them. <laughs> all they have to do is just maybe walk outside. They, they, I, many of these authors I've talked to, photographers, artists, they kind of stepped on it by accident. They, there's a, a guy wrote a book. He lives in New Jersey, Metuchen, New Jersey, if you're familiar with, with them. It, it's further okay. down across uh, kind of central Pennsylvania into New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And... Um, he was walking down the street one day and saw a picture in a uh, storefront that had Dizzy Dean 
and the Cardinals, but then there were uh, black players that were in the picture as well. He's like, what's all that? And so it turned out in 1936, there was a, uh, a barnstorming tour where Dizzy Dean and the St. Louis Cardinals played against the local team, but mm -hmm. so did the Newark Eagles. Now this might have been a this your dad may, probably that was 1936, but you said he barnstormed. He probably if he was on Newark, they probably played in Metuchen, in New Jersey, in subsequent oh, years oh, after oh, that. Yeah. yeah, and so the the, uh, the the other teams that came through were the the Bacharach Giants and and the the New York Cubans and, and other teams that were playing at the time, and so he had no idea. This is a little town. This is a little town in New Jersey, that. It just happens to be on the rail line, <laughs> which, as a lot of them were. So, yeah, that those stories are there. And they're all around you, and um, I think it's uh, important that people hear about them and and right. and and tell them. You know, kind of pay it forward, kind of thing, because it's it's uh, not like you mentioned. Many of these guys, no one will ever ever know who no. they were. Yeah. No. So. Okay. It's sad. Yeah, it really is. So uh, I wanted now. I, I definitely want people to see your some of your artwork, and and you're not going to be able to see this once I switch to um, just for a minute while I'm going through. But we're going to go out. Uh, out of the gallery. Yeah. So I want to take them out. You. So so let's talk about the couple things you've done recently. So the first, the last, the you were just at the Buck Leonard Gala. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh wow! Yeah, that was fantastic. Oh, that was great. Um, it was um, Rocky Mount Mills, um, where I had, where I had my uh, paintings hanging. Mm -hmm. Twenty, twenty-three paintings, and these are the ones that was there, and mm -hmm. some of the other paintings down here that I will show you later. Um, it was so. It was just so great. Um, I bet. Asked me a lot of questions. Um, I like how everything was set up and the surroundings. It looked like a loft, like a huge loft, but it it, it was just great. It was um, hanging there for well, it was only for two weeks. So let me ask you about this before we go too much further on your art. Mm -hmm. What are you using? Is that a, you, is, those are charcoal pencil what are those behind you are they acrylics what what are you what are you working with well a lot of people think that it's charcoal but it's not it's called gouache 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 okay black and white gouache it's a it's a water it's a, like a watercolor type of thing really okay mm -hmm. cool yeah but see i could have done these paintings in color but it was so short notice for this 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 um this gallery, this gallery show. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it took me a month and a week or a couple of days to do 23 paintings. Oh, wow. No, 23? That's an effort, man. Let me move myself out of the way. All right. All right. Now, which one are you talking about? So that's your, so that's Buck Leonard to the right. Yes. That's your dad in the middle? Yes. Awesome. And then this uh -huh. is, and then you min mentioned that's a, uh, his name was Sellers? Larry, uh, that's a Willie Sellers. Willie Sellers, okay. Cool. And, and so. He's in North Carolina and he's still alive today. Awesome. So, so he you. Play, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. So he, um, have you, did you get to meet him, you said? Um, only on Zoom. Okay. Only on Zoom. I mean, eventually we will meet. Eventually. Oh, so he's, he's a he and you and he's in North Carolina. He lives right now. Yeah, he's a pastor. He's just been very, very busy. I wonder. I wonder if he's part of. Uh, if you talk to him next time, see if he's part of what I mentioned to you about the baseball in living color. Uh, all of the players that are working with Jim Burgess. Um, because he he found many of these guys okay. just by um, just by word of mouth. 
uh, he would contact one and then they would tell him about somebody maybe they were keeping in contact with and and so there's a lot of guys who kind of are off the grid you know they may have played in the Negro Leagues and in, in the past but then you know they drift away and who, who, who keeps in touch with who so I wonder if he's uh, if he's on the list of um, in baseball living color we have to I have to get Jim to get in touch with him he needs he needs to be yeah, because, um, they did a news report on him uh, not that long ago, on Willie. Okay. Uh, um, local news here. Okay. And I saw that, so they started talking about baseball, and so he played during the sixties. Okay. All he right. The late sixties. Yeah, most of the players that played that Jim has been working with played after all after Jackie Robinson. Mm -hmm. So that would be late forties through the sixties. Yeah. So. So. Uh, so gouache. Now the color ones, the same thing. Is that the same? Uh... It's a mixture. With I mean, I will do mixed medium with uh, watercolor. I will use um, watercolor, um, color gouache, um, color pencils. You know, just to get that effect. These right here. Now, if I took my time, and I'm not boasting whatsoever, um, these things would look. I'm talking about super. I bet. Detailed. But you I mean, had to I mean, knock out a bunch in 30 I didn't days. Have time. <laughs> yeah. I, I just didn't have time. Yeah. Um, so Carol Carol Torian is her name, yeah. right? At uh, at the um, what's the name of it? The um, is that? I'm sorry. What's the name? The Drinking Gourd Gallery. Drinking is Gord, that right? Drinking Gourd Gallery. Yes. And then you've also got a lot of your work, though, is in um, the airport as well. You mentioned well, one, of, one of my drawings of um, Satchel Page. In what airport is that in? Greensboro, North Carolina. And so what is that part of it? Uh, they have a display set up. I, I, I'm, I'll show those pictures as well so people could see it. But what's that part of what? What's the display that they have out there? Well, they have different types of styles. And, you know, some is um, abstract. So how'd they, uh, find, how'd they find you to put Satchel oh, Page out there? Give that from Carol. Really? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Carol, she she got um, they contacted her, or she got in con contact with them. Um, they picked several people. They picked over a hundred people. I heard, and they only had they only chose probably twenty five, or or a little bit more, out of that a hundred. So I was very honored that they picked my drawing. I bet. <laughs> so I'm gonna there put up. I'm going to put up your your page that's on that the Drinking Gourd Gallery okay. site so you, people can see what other work that you've done here. So hopefully I don't lose you on the uh, Zoom. I don't think I will. All right. So I've got up your, your page now. You can't see it, I don't think. But, um, mm -hmm. but you've got, I mean, some of the work on here is absolutely incredible. I mean... The Muhammad Ali, um, uh, I mean, it just blows me away. I mean, <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness gracious! I mean, there, there are some of these that I, I, I'm, I'm amazed. I, I'm quite impressed. But you've got quite, you've got, you've got quite an array. You go from Ali, Aretha Franklin, soccer, Bruce Lee. Tell us about about the what you've got a little bit of a affinity for martial arts too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I did taekwondo, but that's a long time ago. And um you've got George Michael on here. How'd you wind up with George Michael? Somebody you know, when he passed away. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, do you do the do people commission any work for you or how do you how are you doing what you're doing? Well, they commission work. Oh, yeah, um, I've had several people you know buy my work. Um, I did work for Johnson and Johnson uh, Pharmaceutical. Okay. Um, in San Diego, I did four paintings for them. Um, I was working security at uh, it was in um, you heard of Torrey Pines, right? Yeah, the golf course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was working at Johnson Johnson by you know in, by Tory Pines, and I was sitting behind the desk in the lobby, and I was just sketching real quick. So the person that runs the the whole operation saw you know say hey Daryl how you doing and um, was looking over the desk, 
And he said, uh, you draw one? She, I didn't get in trouble for it. So he, goes, <laughs> so he showed me, he sh- he, I showed him the, the, um, the drawing and he, he, it just blew his mind. Uh-huh. So I am a, you know, I kind of gave him this pitch. I say, um, sir, I walk around this place, patrol the labs and everything like that, and I see the pictures on the wall. You know what's so funny? You got pictures of flowers and pictures of silhouette things and all this stuff, but you don't have one picture of of scientists or ah. pharmaceutical related thing. Uh-huh. So he kind of looked at me and uh, he said, um, so what you thinking, Daryl? Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm thinking that you need to have a couple of um, pharmaceutical pictures or paintings. He said, so what you're saying, you think you can do that? Yeah, sure, I can. So he said, okay, we'll have a meeting, not with me, but we'll have a meeting and you know, see what they think. A week later, they came up to me, he came up to me and said, we want to commission you to do a painting. Awesome. And that was, um, I believe that was 19, 1999. Wow. 1999. And I did, uh, an, an, I wish I could show it, but a nice picture of, uh, I had to go in there and take pictures of the, of the, of the scientists in the lab and, um, got that done. Um, the money they gave me was very good. Then they asked me to do another one. Then they asked me to do another one. Then they asked me to do another one. Cool. Then I was on the news on um, um, in San Diego. Awesome. awesome. There was I... a lot of things that was going on over there. And then being part of the art society in La Jolla. So, so you have been... Um doing art for 30 40 years now right well professionally i've been doing it and getting paid for it was probably 19 hmm, 89 80, 88 89 i believe what would you call your what would you call your style my style you think you have <laughs> what mood i am in because <laughs> I, I tell you what, you know, when I'm looking at, I mean, these ones that you've done of prints are incredible. I mean, I, I, I mean, the prints. Which one? I don't know. There's three. There's three or four that you've done of prints that all of them, in their own, in their own way, are different, and yet, um, you definitely capture. The essence of Prince, I can tell you that. Yeah, I wish I can see that. Um, one is the caricature of Prince. Yep. There's, there's a tall one where he's hugging. Holding a guitar. A guitar, yeah. But then there's one of his face with the uh, the tattoo. Um, you talking about him? The black purple, and white? purple Prince, it's called. Purple Prince. Yeah, it's. Oh, is that, it's, oh the it's, one it's, with his hands up in the air. Oh, well, there's that one, but there's one of his head. Uh, yeah, I wish you could see this. It's just more of his face with the tattoo around his eye. Oh, yeah, 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 I like that one. I mean, these are these are absolutely incredible. Um, Mike, Tyson, Mike Tyson on here. Kobe Bryant. And I did the Kobe Bryant probably two days after the, that, that, that crash. What city vibe? Hmm? You got one on here called City Vibe. With a man with afro? Yes. And a pick in his hair? Yes. Hmm? So what 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 was that? What was that for? Is the who the same who's that guy? Um oh god, what I forgot the name of the, those guys. Oh my god, I'm I feel ashamed that I forgot. Um You've got Barack on here. You got Michelle Obama. You've got, uh, yeah, you've done some incredible stuff. Thank you. Love it. <laughs> I'm just trying to think who that. I think it's Jimmy Kimball. He has a. You watch Jimmy Kimball? Uh, oh no, the Roots. 
He's um he's a lead. He's a drummer of, of the group called The Root. Oh, okay. All right. And he's a, he plays it with you know in the, the show Jimmy Kimmel show. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna put you uh, put you back on. But yeah, like I said, I wanted I wanted people to get a feel for uh, not just your um, your baseball work, but um, some of the other things that you've been doing as well which is very, very cool. So what's next? What are you working on next? Well, I'm hoping that I can do, um, start doing a jazz series. Okay, cool. Okay, just like I did with, um, with the baseball stuff. But my father um, had a, a famous cousin, first cousin, his name is Red Calendar. And he wasn't, um, I believe he was a known jazz musician. Um, he played in a couple of movies with uh, Eartha Kitt. He didn't. Well, he played a movie with Eartha Kitt, um, Nat King Cole. Okay. I forgot the name of the movie. It's something, something blue or something like that. Um, he was on the Flip Wilson show. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And stuff like that. Um, never had a chance to meet him because when I moved from from New Jersey to San Diego and when I visit my dad red already passed away like um, I think he passed away 92 and I came there in 93 huh. cool but I met my other cousins so I'm trying to see if I can get your you sent me a number of pictures that were very specific to the uh, airport and the gallery and everything else but and I have them <laughs> yeah and I have them here so people could take a look at that but I'm trying to see if I can get them up without having to turn you turn the camera off here the, the only problem with sometimes with this streaming software and zoom it's mm -hmm. it's very funny sometimes that it's not always doesn't always like to share cameras very well so if I go and turn it off, then that's it. I'm going to be gone, and that's going to be that. So I'm trying to see if I can add it in um, here without turning off, turning you off on the camera, because that's the whole idea. Well, you here. know something? You can probably turn me off, but can you hear me if I'm talking? Yeah, yeah. Can you can turn me off. That's that's fine. Well, let's let's see if I can get. Uh, Let's see if I can get the. Um... I would love them to see the gallery. I mean. Yeah, I want to try to get um, to see the things that you have on here. I might be able to just do it by what I'm seeing on the screen. So let me mm -hmm. let me try that. Um... Carol did a fantastic job on that gallery. Boy, oh boy, yeah. She she I have to give her credit for a lot of things. She's. Um... A good person and a hard worker, and um, this, you know, she's. I said, I told her she's gonna make it to the Oprah Winfrey status. <laughs> uh, but that's her goal. She she says she's gonna meet Oprah, and I honestly feel she is going to meet her. That Seriously, would, that would be very cool, right? Mm -hmm. I said, All don't forget right. about me if you ever get rich. So, right. So. <laughs> I'm trying to. Uh, all right. She's gonna be rich before me. So. Um, I don't want to be rich. I'd rather be comfortable. So comfortable and happy. I think I'm able to get this switched over. So now. Okay. So now let's see what stand we're seeing. Stand by, here. Audience, Stand by. Yeah. So let's see. I think so. We've got a picture of. the drinking gourd gallery mm -hmm. with the blue walls and uh i see mule subtles up there and uh several others uh let's see boy that picture is that your dad again that's on there um there's like a flyer from the drinking gourd gallery um 
but it's like kind of the mirror image of that picture of your dad leaning on the uh, the bat. That is a cool, cool, it, and it mentions the dates, June 19th through September 25th. The Black Diamond. That's, the, that's in Rocky Mount. That was in Rocky Mount. Mount Meadows, yep. Boy, oh boy. Boy, that is a big drawing you did of uh, your dad. It's next to the stairs. It's uh, That looks like that's about four or five feet tall. Well, that's not a pit. That was a cardboard. Um, ah, gotcha. That's a card. No, not that. <laughs> so you've got, um, there's another picture here. You've got Rube Foster, Effa Manley. Um... Mule Suttles is on there. There's six pictures on a wall. Where's that one? Oh, the pictures? With the Rube, Rube Foster, F. Manley in it. That's hanging on the wall? Yeah. That's Rocky Mount. Rocky Mount That's Mount. in Rocky Mount, too? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anything you see on the wall there, that's all that was in Rocky Mount. Is that Rocky Mount? Cool. Boy, oh boy, that's Hank Aaron. You've got, you've got, uh, yeah, you've done uh, Martin DeHigo. No kidding. No. Yep. Rap Dixon, I see there. <laughs> wow. So how did you pick out what players you did that were hanging on the wall? Well, yeah, the, you know, well, there's some players I don't know about. Yeah. Um, we try to be diverse with players like, you know, we, you saw a couple of, I don't know, Spanish players or women yeah. players and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, we're going to have to get you, we're going to have to get you up to speed on that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I don't know what's going to happen with, with these paintings. Um, only thing I know that I don't want to, it's not written in stone. Um, it was, I mean, I can't really say the name, but, um, there was someone that might be interested in having these paintings travel. So absolutely, I really can't even discuss that. You know, but boy, you, that happens. Boy, you did. Uh, that's the Joker. Oh, you tell me. Oh, with the cigarette. Yeah, boy, oh boy. You know something? I honestly love that painting. Yeah. I love that <laughs> right. I, I I put I put my 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 soul in it <laughs> awesome so seriously if any of the people can see that you know i could i can't see it but yeah uh, yeah absolutely james brown wow lebron yeah. james you have yeah you have got quite a um quite an array of things that you have done awesome. when i paint my work looks more realistic yeah, it I, definitely. In color, in color, I'm sorry. In color, it looks more realistic. Um, I just love watercolor. Mm -hmm. um, I really do. It, it's one of my best mediums. There's a satchel page that's hanging in the uh, airport. Okay, yeah. Cool. This is pencil on cold pressed paper. Nice. Boy, I'll tell you what. I mean, your, your work is... Uh, fantastic hats off to you man i'm uh i'm glad that you uh, are getting some of this into your um uh out there because i think it's it's um it's great work your story I'm, i got you back on now your story i think is fantastic um you know uh the fact that um you 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 are trying to carry on that legacy and tell those stories that that your dad was part of it's um and this is the time to get it out there and do it because it's it's there's a there's it's a lot in the news there's a lot of talk about it like i said when you got the president and the pope talking satchel page and negro leagues that's a good thing yes <laughs> oh and i want to apologize here if um anyone that's watching if I look tired, I am tired. I bet you are. I, I don't want no, to keep no, it too no, much. No, no, no. I'm enjoying this. No, no, no. 
Philip, this is fantastic. Well, the reason why, because I work at night. Mm -hmm. I work at night. And I'm going to say this. I, I, I can be proud of myself to say this. Um, well, the type of work I do, it, it's, it's hard work. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't mind working hard. But doing these paintings, um, it was a juggle. But I've learned something from it. Because um, I knew that this show was going to be important. Mm -hmm. Gallery, mm -hmm. and um, it, it was such a short notice. Mm -hmm. uh, boy, I kept oh boy. on going, kept on going, I kept on going, and what I learned from it in the end, that I've always been well, I've been knew that I've always been good on good under pressure. So I'm just going to say to anybody, um, use that pressure. Mm -hmm. Don't you know, don't always be relaxed because. Your best work comes when you're under pressure sometimes. It does. Yeah, that's a good point. Sometimes. No, not all the time. Well, motivation. Um, when, what, different pe people get motivated different ways. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there's some people who crack under the pressure, right? <laughs> yeah, and another thing I want to thank um, the people at Rocky Mountain Mills for letting me and Carol have that use that gallery mm -hmm. giving us the opportunity to um be exposed and um yeah i'm looking forward to um, doing other things um and i hope one day that these paintings can be moved to greater things mm -hmm. um you know while i'm alive and when i'm gone absolutely yeah it's how you pass you know, people always talk about, uh, you know, this is how you live forever, really. I mean, yeah. like, well, the soul is here. Yeah. These, this is part, I mean, even mm -hmm. though these are people that I did, but me is part of that. I'm yeah. part of this. Yeah. So, that I mean, this right here, whoever owns it or whoever will have it, um, they're going to have pretty much 23 paintings of uh, Daryl. That's yeah. going to be part of me so. yeah good and the bad yeah <laughs> so when i asked you about commission work do you have someone come and say hey can you do me a picture of josh gibson does anybody do they do that at all do you do commit work like that i did a painting a drawing i'm sorry for this young man probably 2016 um i forgot who i'm sorry i forgot who the negro league player is it was supposed to be a negro league negro league player and my dad mm -hmm. together but i mean they wasn't truly together so i mm -hmm. had to make it seem like they was together mm -hmm. and um you know because he was a big fan of my dad this is a young man you know mm -hmm. and there was another guy that on facebook that's a stunt coordinator um he was in um, um jet lee movies as a bad guy and he played really Oh yeah, he was on John Mayer. He was on John Mayer video um, with the, what's her name? Um, what the girlfriend that John Mayer had before? What's her name? I know. Oh, who you, I know who you're talking about, but I. Uh, um, yeah. He's on. Um, got something? Got talent? Whatever that is. Yeah. Katy Perry. Katy Perry. Yeah. Yeah, they was on a video together, and in that singing the song. But my friend on Facebook was on that video riding a horse and falling off the horse with his wife, you know, you know, wife, you know, and um, the guy that's, a, I'm talking about the guy that's a martial arts coordinator. He told me that I met your dad and I've been his Facebook friend for wow. several years. Cool. So, you know, I was like, he said, I didn't know that was your father all that time. <laughs> Facebook friends, I brought your dad and other Negro League players out to lunch. And I'm gonna tell you, let me tell you this story because I think this is really touching. Mm -hmm. But what he told me, he said he was at a gallery, a sports gather, gallery. Um, there was a table with the, the old time Negro League players. There was another table of today's players, you know? All right, they was charging over a hundred something dollars mm -hmm. or more for an autograph photo. Mm -hmm. 
these great other great Negro League, the Negro League players that is, that deserve so much more, mm-hmm. was charging twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my Facebook friend John, his name is John. I'm sorry, John. He went over to that table, was talking to them, the the, um, the Negro League players. But then after signing was over, the, the the young professional players walked, was getting ready to walk away and pass the table. Mm-hmm. Pass the pass the freaking table mm-hmm. and didn't really say much to, this, to, to some of these guys. Mm-hmm. And John was bothered by that. Mm-hmm. Because those men made the way for those for men that's making millions of dollars. That's right. So what what John did, he spent time and talked with them and took them out to lunch. Mm-hmm. He or lunch for these men. Mm-hmm. No, I. And he wrote me and told me that that touched my heart so much. Mm-hmm. He no. said your dad was just a laid back guy, just you know, a lot of them was just laid back, you know. And so the, that's what he did. That story, right? When you think about what they those guys had to play under and endure and the conditions and I mean they're just trying to go to work and you're having to deal with the baloney you know uh, you, you've all you've seen all the movies I mean I'm sure you know it was probably even toned down the the racial you know undertones that they had to deal with as far as you know I, I've talked to these authors and researchers these historians you know, there were towns. If you you had to get out of town by by sundown, otherwise uh, you were taking your life in your hands. You know, so these players today never had to uh, deal with any of that. And and yeah, I wish I I hear you. I wish that they had more of an appreciation or at least an understanding, at least a, a general knowledge of what these guys went through. Because there's got to be some respect for that. That that's that's not. Um, was not easy and yet they 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 overcame it and they got it done like your father and many of the men of that era so yeah I think I, maybe i exaggerated i think they did a couple of them did come up to them mm-hmm. there was some of them that did just kept on walking sure so i don't doubt it like kind of made it sound like all of them just walked yeah by. But no, I, but, I don't doubt it though yeah i mean some <laughs> of them they, they did there was pretty much of them came up and but there was some that just kept on going mm-hmm yeah, no, I don't, I don't doubt it. Yeah, no, th- these guys um, went through a lot. They they accomplished so much, um, and like I said, it's a great American story. You know, when you hear, I mean, like I said, your your dad's story. You need to write a book. You you need to you need mm-hmm. to illustrate and write your own book. Tell you what, you know, we could probably hook you up. With, let's let's do we could do a children's book on your dad's. Uh, That's funny. That's funny. With you somebody, could do uh, you could do the illustration. We'll write the book and uh, and and get it done because I, I tell you what, it's a great story. Well, the only thing I would like to do is that because of, this is why I like to pitch. I'm gonna pitch this out with some of these paintings. I wouldn't mind doing having a book. But then having the photo, the, the pictures of these, but in the corner, they are story. Mm-hmm. This little story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, um, yeah. to, to give to you know kids or to teens mm-hmm. that don't know much about about these players. Mm-hmm. And it'd be a simple book, but it have will have my drawings in that book, but just with the words of what the year they was born. You know what they. You know who they play, what games they played, what team they played, and all that. On just something, you know, simple. Let's make it happen, man. <laughs> well, I'm available. All right. All these are available. Yeah, let's let's see what we can do about that. I, I think it's great. Uh, I love your work. I think it's awesome. I, I was curious this whole time of what you were using, so I'm glad you explained uh, what that was because I, I I've actually never heard of that. I never, I never heard of that, but I, I knew it had to be some sort of a, uh, you know, look, look watercolor. But like I said, these look like charcoal, the ones that you're sitting in front of now. So it's they, cool. they do look like charcoal, but you know, I'm gonna say the origin of how I start using gouache was um, is the artist named Alec Ross. He's a comic book artist. Okay. And um, he kind of beat me to the punch because I almost got, and that's another crazy story about 
sometimes hurts my heart, but I almost got hired by Marvel Comics. Oh, that, man. Yeah, yeah but uh, I should, when I, if I do write a book, then it would probably someone would want to probably smack me or something. But um, <laughs> So he works for Marvel, but he does realistic um, watercolor. Mm-hmm. And uh, he is fantastic. And he now he uses gouache because the colors are more vibrant. Cool. All right, man. Uh, this was this was a lot of fun. Let's uh, let's let's uh, don't don't go away. After I sign off here, I, I want to talk to you for a minute before before we before you go. Uh, we, I know you got to get to bed though, because you got to get some sleep. But uh, funny to say that and go to bed was well, beautiful day. Yeah, I know, right? Funny and everything like that, but uh, out of work. But yeah, uh, I appreciate your time. This was a lot of fun. I, I hope. I hope, uh, like I said, I'm gonna. I post this uh, number of places. I'll get you a copy uh, once I clean it up a little bit. And make sure that uh, everything looks looks good. But it's it's out there. It's, it'll sit out there on that on that link I sent you for 30, 60 days uh, yeah. as well. Anyway, but I'll send you a, a link that you can, if you want to use it for anything you want to use it for. And 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 like I said, I, I appreciate your work. Hats off to you. This your your work is fantastic. Your 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 father's story. Your story story is a great story for people to hear i i hope uh, i hope um people take that to heart that um you know follow follow your passions do what you do what you can and and uh then